Hi, welcome to the Rhetoric 306 class um, through the Spurs Dual Credit Program at UT Austin. Um, my name is Ashley Miller. I'm here with Eric Dieter, and um, we are very excited to be working with you. Um, I'll go ahead and let Eric introduce himself to you since he is the mastermind behind everything. Great, well, not, not really the mastermind, but um, my name is Eric Dieter. I'm the program coordinator for Spurs. Spurs is a partnership between the Division of Diversity and Community Engagement and the Department of Rhetoric and Writing. Both those divisions are on campus here and they've worked together to offer a dual credit opportunity for high school students like yourselves. So you'll go through this course over the next year and what you'll come out with is three credit hours in Rhetoric 306, which is the introductory rhetoric and writing class that all students at UT Austin are asked or required to take. By doing this, if you successfully complete the course and get the credit, you'll be able to transfer out of that class and move on to the intermediate class as soon as you come on campus. More importantly, what you're going to get, I think, are the, are the rhetorical skills, the critical skills, the communication skills, and the writing skills that you'll need to be successful at college level writing. So the things that you're doing in this class, which Ashley is going to talk about in a minute here, these are exactly the kind of things you were doing if you were sitting in a chair at UT. Uh, can you talk a little bit, actually, about the 306 class? Ashley teaches sure. the 306, so she'll talk um, about So I am an assistant instructor here at UT Austin. Um, I've taught the Rhetoric 306 class. I also teach a Rhetoric 309K, which is very similar to the 306, a little more um, advanced topics. And um, there's a basic arch in these Rhetoric classes that you'll experience here this semester where you start by considering a conversation, some sort of controversy. For you all, you're going to be studying the DREAM Act this semester, and we'll talk more about that if you're not sure yet what it is. Um, you're going to start by studying what a bunch of different people say about the DREAM Act. What are the different opinions out there? What do they think about it? Um, and then you'll zoom in and you'll study one very specific argument that's being made about the DREAM Act in what we call a rhetorical analysis essay. And finally, you'll end the semester by producing your very own piece of writing where you make an argument about the DREAM Act. Um, so essentially what that will look like through your assignments is um, it's broken into three units. The first unit is your annotated bibliography. You'll be working in groups. Each group will have a set of articles that you'll be reading that express different opinions about the DREAM Act. And as a group you'll produce um, what we call an annotated bibliography where you'll summarize each of those opinions um, and discuss how they relate to one another. And once you're finished with that, you'll start unit two. In Unit 2, you'll each pick a text. Um, again, these will all be things you've read before in Unit 1. And you'll examine very closely the way the author of that text uses language to convince their audience um, of whatever their opinion is. After you do that in Unit 2, um, that will culminate with an essay called the Rhetorical Analysis Essay. The final unit and your final essay for the semester is the synthesis essay, where you situate yourself within the controversy that you've already studied. And you say, so-and-so thinks this, so-and-so thinks that. Here's what I believe. Um, so using these sources you've already um, read and summarized and investigated, you will construct your own persuasive piece of writing. And that's the final um, piece for the fall semester. Um, and that's pretty much what you'll have to look forward to over the next few months. Great, thank you. Yeah, and this, like, again, is, is exactly the kind of work you would be doing if you were in an introductory rhetoric and writing class here at UT and in a lot of other colleges and universities as well. All this information is going to be distributed to you in the syllabus, which is an outline of everything we're going to be doing this semester. So you want to make sure you're looking at that syllabus for each week to make sure that you're getting everything done on time. There's also a course policy statement, which is basically an FAQ giving you all the information you need to be successful in the course, including a checklist of all the due dates and all the deadlines. Uh, there is a breakdown of the course grade, so you'll see what each assignment that you'll be doing is worth and how the course grade in the fall will be a midterm grade. At the end of the spring, it'll be a full course grade is worth. You'll also be able to find information about absences, which is basically avoid them. You'll find information about the late policy. If you turn in work late, you will be penalized a certain number of points for each day. You'll find out information about queue dropping, which allows you to take the course but not get the college credit. So if you need to drop the course because you're falling behind or because you're not getting the grade you want, you don't have to accept the credit. You don't have to accept the failing grade. You can queue drop, still be in the class, but not take the college credit. Okay. Um, I think 
that's about it in terms of what's on the policy statement. You'll want to read through it, obviously, and, and, and get all that information with your and teacher. That checklist Eric pointed out with the dates, that's um, really important. You want to get yourself a, an agenda, a planner, some sort of calendar if you don't already have one, and get all those dates transcribed because there are a lot of assignments, um, and as Eric said, there are penalties for lateness, and that's an easy way to kind of stay on top of things is to get those dates written down early. Great. Great. I think the other thing we need to talk about right up front is plagiarism, which is obviously passing off words or ideas as your own when they're not your own. I think we all know what this is. I think we all know that it's a form of academic dishonesty, and I, and I think you know to avoid it. Um, the policy statement has an explicit definition of what plagiarism is, some examples, and then some discussions of the penalties, which can include failure for the assignment, failure for the course, and even if you are at UT, expulsion from the university. So plagiarism is very serious, but I think a word to the wise is to just do your own work and you'll be better off, okay? Absolutely. Great, great. The very beginning of the semester, um, there will be some housekeeping items that we need you to do. Again, this information is gonna be in the course policy statement. You're gonna make sure you need to get an electronic identification, which allows you to access the websites, including the one where this video is hosted. So hopefully you've already done that. There's some, uh, enrollment application paperwork that you need to fill out that's going to be online as well and there will also be some surveys that we'll need you to do before you get started with the semester so a little bit of housekeeping a little bit of reading the syllabus and policy statement and then you're getting on to the work that Ashley just described I guess what we want to do now is close out with a little discussion about what rhet what is rhetoric what are you studying here what do you tell your students Ashley well, rhetoric, the way I describe it, is um, the very precise, careful, thoughtful use of language to convey, um, you know, an argument or you know, a persuasive effort or just an opinion that you have. And as you'll learn towards the end of the semester, it doesn't have to be language only. It could be a text such as a visual uh, picture or sort of moving image can also express rhetoric, but I think for me it comes down to the very intentional and precise use of these words um, to create an overall effect on, on another person. It's about engaging um, back and forth. Yeah, absolutely. I like to tell my students that it's purposeful. People do things, they have intentions, they're motivated, they want desired effects, and so they try to use language or, or visuals or whatever it happens to be music, and they try to use it to, to, to do those things, to bring about their purpose. Um, and that's really an old definition of rhetoric. Aristotle, ancient Greek philosopher well known, he called rhetoric the art of persuasion. And he means it's an art in that it's something you can study and it's something you can do. So what we're talking about is the doing of it, trying to be persuasive, trying to get people to believe or not believe something, trying to get people to act or not act in the way that you want them to. So we have to admit that that's part of rhetoric. It always has been persuasion. Right? If, if you lie to people, if you give them misinformation, that's called manipulation, right? But it's still a form of rhetoric. It's still a form of persuasion. It's just a bad form of it. It's clearly the form that we're trying to avoid. So the study, this whole purpose of this class is to study better forms, more productive, more honest and transparent forms of rhetoric, not the sort of manipulative forms, but the cleaner, more civically minded forms of rhetoric. I think that one other thing that's very important to keep in mind, I mentioned earlier that you'll be studying the DREAM Act, and there's a lot of contention that can arise with the DREAM Act. Um, it's about education and immigration, and education and immigration are both issues people have very strong opinions about. So it's important to respectfully engage with another person. And one of the goals of rhetoric is really to communicate back and forth. Um, with respect for the person you're speaking with, with empathy for that person's position. So even if you disagree in the end, Absolutely. there's still um, thoughtful communication. Absolutely. R rhetoric, when done well, doesn't really care whether or not you agree or disagree with one another. What it cares about is whether or not you've heard on each other, whether or not you've actively listened, productively listened to one another. And in fact, that's sort of what we think about rhetoric now as today, just the production of understanding and the reduction of misunderstanding, right? Again, the production of understanding and the reduction of misunderstanding. So what we mean is productive listening, hearing what other people say, admitting when they've made good points, right? Admitting that you understand what they're trying to get at and then matching what they're saying with 
what you believe. Where are we similar? Where are we dissimilar? Right? Now that we know where we're dissimilar, we can have better, more productive arguments. Right? So the goal of rhetoric, even if it has a persuasive dimension, is not to win. It is not to beat other people. So in that way, it's not like football or baseball or basketball, where, there, where, there's, where there's a winner and there's a loser. Right? Nobody has to win an argument in order for that argument to be helpful or productive. Right? Anything else about that? Oh, I think I think that's fantastic. Great. I'm looking forward to a great semester. We're looking forward to a great semester. Again, this is the first of many videos. Um, Ashley and I will, will be in some of these other videos. We also are going to bring in some of our colleagues and some of the department heads from the rhetoric of, uh, Department of Rhetoric and Writing to do be in these videos as well. So you're going to see a lot of faces, get a lot of expertise. We're not production experts, so these videos are going to be conversational. They're going to be informal, but they're going to be archived on the official Spurs website so that you can always access them if you need a refresher about what we're talking about. So thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Good luck. Bye.